السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام السلام ورحمة الله ورحمة الله السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام How are you? So sorry, just finished an important meeting. Let us start by Umm al-Kitab. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين Have a good day and let us start our session by the first group Okay Good uh, I need you to concentrate in the clinical sense. The knowledge you can read it, all of us. We will go retrieve your slides, but I need you to give us the conclusion about the uh, clinical sense. Okay? Inshallah. Okay, so I will uh, be presenting the first part, which is the development of milestones. So I am Amira. I will be presenting the domain of cruise motor. The next slide. Okay, so uh, gross motor development uh, is generally a cephalocorder pattern. It follows a cephalocorder pattern, which means in relation to the maturation of the CNS system and myelination. So this is the most rapid development that can be seen, of, uh, that can seen uh, obviously. It begins in utero until the first two years of life. So as you can see in the table, which is the phases of motor development. So from birth to four months, we would expect primitive refle uh, reflexive movements and four months until one year, which is the inhibition of the primitive reflexes and then improvement of muscle tone, uh, postural control and balance. One to two years will be improvement in terms of stability and power to add until seven years is uh, maturing into uh, functional movements and um, coordination seven years on work will be spe uh, spe uh, specialized skills development. Okay, so the next one slide. Okay, so these are the primitive reflexes. Uh, this is just revision. Um, so the, the most important one is the, uh, uh, the palmar graphs reflect, which is when we put hand, our finger onto the palm, stimul uh, uh, stimul uh, stimulate the palm, uh, the, uh, the child would uh, grab the grasp uh, finger, which indicates a positive grasp reflex. And then rooting reflex is when we, uh, we put our finger uh, towards uh, periorally, and the child would uh, turn uh, his head towards the uh, finger. Um, and also sucking reflex when we stimulate, uh, stimulate the palate, uh, there will be uh, automatic sucking um, and moral reflex is a uh, starter reflex when we um, hold the baby on spine position and abruptly move uh, downward like uh, and it will start the baby where uh, the hand will extend um, and abduct. Okay, and also baby also may cry. This is moral reflex. Okay, uh, the next one is asymmetric uh, tonic net reflex is when we uh, turn the head towards uh, one side, which is, uh, for example, left side, and then the hand and the leg of the left side would uh, extend and the hand of the uh, opposite side would uh, flex. So uh, other reflect, uh, primitive reflex, uh, you can um, read by yourself, but at least you have to know the grass reflex, the moral reflex, um, the suckling reflex, and the rooting reflex. These are the primitive reflex. So uh, any inhibition of the pre, uh, any uh, any uh, delay in the inhibition of primitive reflex would suggest that the uh, the CNS maturation is fail, failing. Okay. So the next slide. <coughs> okay. So this is uh, adapted from the primitive protocol uh, where we see the um, chronology of uh, skills that we be acquired by the child, normal child. Okay. So first of all, we look by column. So when we apply the maneuver, uh, can you click slide? Okay. When we apply the mover, pull to sit. We try to pull uh, the hand of the baby and sit. Uh, the head leg would, um, uh, there will be head leg in six weeks and uh, round the back. However, uh, the, uh, by three months, uh, the head leg will occasionally uh, disappear. And by six months, uh, the baby would 
um, anticipate the pulling and uh, the baby can also sit with support. Okay, so uh, this is uh, evolution. Basically, this is evolution of sitting. So by uh, nine months, the baby can sit steadily with straight back and uh, without support. So um, uh, the next column will be ventral suspension. Ventral suspension is a maneuver where you hold the baby in a ventral position and suspend. And we would uh, observe um, either the head is, uh, uh, for example, in the uh, second picture, uh, of the second column, okay. You can see uh, the first picture is uh, like floppy baby, right? Okay, so this is a uh, newborn. Uh, the, the, uh, the picture below is uh, at three months where the head can be held up above plane of the body by three months. And uh, okay, so this is basically to see uh, the support, uh, like the neck support of the baby, the upper support. And the uh, posture support, which is uh, the prone posture, we would expect uh, uh, the third picture uh, on the right, which is uh, pelvic is high but knees no longer under abdomen, chin can be raised intermittently out of course, and then head turn to one side. This is uh, at six weeks and three months, uh, they would uh, develop um, strength at the upper arm and they can lift head up to 45 to 90 degree and support the weight on four arms. If uh, uh, by six months, we can uh, support the weight uh, by chest and upper part of the abdomen, and we would expect rolling. Rolling from prone to supine at uh, five to six months and supine to prone at six to seven months. So um, by nine months, um, we would uh, look at the evolution uh, from standing to walking, uh, meaning a uh, no, uh, baby is trying to uh, locomoto, develop the locomoto, which is uh, uh, baby would learn to um, pull self to stand and then uh, either cruising or holding on to the furniture um, or uh, the, uh, nine months uh, wriggling on the abdomen or crawling. Uh, by 12 months, uh, baby would uh, be able to stand alone without help. <coughs> May also walk alone. Uh, walk either with help or um, walk on hand and feet like a bear. Uh, it depends. It varies, but at 12 months, we will expect uh, the baby can stand. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, this is... Sorry, uh, the Sorry ca come back. Thank you. Thank okay. you for this nice slide. This one, we can use it for two jobs. The first one is the assessment of the normal development. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it is the same one can be applied for checking is there any hypotonia or not. They call it... Uh, 180 degree tests. It is the same like the picture on the left. You are trying to pull the hand to see if there any head lag or not because it signs of hypotonia. But please, even in your neck, you need to put your hand just below. Don't leave the head coming until 90 degree. It is not good for the baby. Okay. Ah, I see. Okay. okay so then, at the 45 degree only, doctor. Yeah, put your hand until you can assess and then support the baby. Don't leave him oh, okay. because if he is so floppy, he will not uh, maintain his one and he can traumatize himself. Oh. The second one, you will just try to hang the baby under the axilla before carrying him on your hand, okay? Mm -hmm. If the baby is severe hypotonic, he will be slip from, okay. from your hand. He cannot support himself. Mm -hmm. uh, am I clear? Yes, yes, sir. And then after that, you are going to do the second one to see how much is the curvature of the of the back during carrying him, okay? And then you will put him on the brown position and see his response. He carries hand, raise his head or not, his back or not, his pelvis or not. He can uh, like that. So it is known as 180 degree test, okay? Good, good. Continue. So uh, the next uh, division is uh, one year, uh, one year, uh, 15 months until five years old, which is we look at the evolution from walk, run and jump. Uh, we would expect uh, the, the, uh, the, ch the child can walk alone with broad base gait, uh, gait and by 18 months walks well, uh, runs but uh, can seldom fall. Uh, and then two years old, they can run safely uh, uh, and jump uh, at two and a half years. Okay, 
So uh, by three years old, they would do uh, evolution of one foot, which is what on uh, stand on one foot momentarily. Uh, four years old, uh, stand on one foot more than uh, three to five second, and can also hops on one foot. By five years old, uh, they can do almost uh, balance on one foot for longer time. Okay. So for stair, uh, climbing up stair, uh, by 15 months, they can only creep. By, by 18 months, uh, they would uh, need help if they want to walk up uh, and downstairs. Um, two years old, they can go up and down uh, stairs, but two feet per step. Uh, by three years old, uh, one foot up, but going downstairs would be two feet per step. Okay, so uh, four years old can uh, already walk or run up uh, and downstairs one foot per step. Okay, so in terms of uh, playing with ball, by two years old, uh, when they see ball, they would uh, try to kick, but cannot kick. Two and a half years, then they can kick the large ball gently. Uh, by three years old, they can kick uh, the ball forcibly or uh, can also throw a ball overhand. And to note here, they can ride a uh, tricycle when uh, they are three years old. Okay. So uh, I divided based on um, the items like walk, run, jump, uh, stair, and balls so that uh, we can ask based on uh, the item itself. Okay. Just to note that uh, you uh, you can remember that uh, at three years old they would um, uh, always uh, it is about one foot something um, like stands on one foot uh, trying to go up the stair one foot okay the next slide okay uh, the normal variation uh, uh, the variation of uh, skills uh, equipped by a normal child is a variety. Like some can uh, crawl at nine months, some uh, cannot crawl, just straight away stand. But uh, this is uh, the, the variety. But there is a limit age uh, that uh, if the child cannot uh, achieve this skill, then it would suggest pathology. Like, uh, for example, head control, the limit age is four months old. So if the head control is not achieved by four months old, then we would. Uh, indicate for further investigation, like sits unsupported by nine months old, uh, stands with support at least 12 months and walks independently 18 months. So uh, other markers that indicate uh, abnormality in the next um, table is uh, basic, uh, the same is uh, irritability, feeding or respiratory problems, floppiness or stiffness, uh, poor head control, first four months, five to eight months will be asymmetry of movement, uh, persisting primitive reflex. Uh, note here that primitive reflex inhibition is by six months. Okay, fisted hands, hypotonia, poor eye movements. Nine to twelve months will be trunk control. Uh, mm -hmm. yes, Very good to consider the red flag uh, the red for flags. your uh, medical practice for everything. Mm -hmm. Red flag for increased intracerebral pressure. Red flag for neonatal jaundice. Red flag for like that. Sometimes you call it yellow flag for the jaundice. So it is very important really to uh, retrieve this uh, title. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I think that's all from me. Good, are you Amira? Yes, I am Amira. Amirudin. Okay, well done Amira, okay. Okay, let's proceed with the second assessment, which is fine motor assessment. So my name is Rafi Kanita Gudafa and uh, placing number one seat from Zona Nancy. Okay, so let's proceed. Uh, your voice is a uh, bit far. Dengar tak? Dengar, dengar, dengar. Sorry for the technical problem. Okay, uh, so for fine motor uh, assessment, it's, it's actually uh, go in line with the visual perception uh, development. So children will change from reacting to sensations 
uh, met random uh, and uncoordinated, uncoordinated movements to acting in a plain and coordinated manner. So, uh, okay, next slide. <coughs> okay, so for one month old uh, child, they usually have uh, not yet developed the fine motor development because this is the phase that, that start to develop uh, visual and perceptual development. So, uh, they will only... Uh, the pupils will only react to light and then turn to the head and eyes towards the diffuse light source, uh, follows pencil light. Uh, and, and all of this is the only the visual perception uh, development, not, not yet the fine motor development. Okay, next. Okay, so, uh, and then uh, at three months old, then only the fine motor development started, uh, fine motor started to develop. So, when the child is uh, lying supine, they will have hand regards in which they will watch their uh, movement of their own hands uh, and engage in finger play, opening and closing the hands and pressing palms of hands together. And also they will uh, reach, try to reach out to grasp with both, both hands by 60 to 18 weeks. Uh, and also if uh, they were given rattles, they will hold the rattle for only a few moments. Uh, and uh, But they seldom capable of uh, regarding it until 16 to 18 weeks. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Okay, so for six months old, uh, eventually uh, they will start to stretch out both hands simultaneously to grabs. And they usually use the two-handed two scooping in a push. And uh, when any, when toy falls uh, within their visual field, they will uh, watch the toy uh, at the resting place. But when the toy falls outside the visual field, they will start to search or usually they will start to forget uh, forgets the toys because of the early permanence of object. <clears throat> Next. Okay, for nine months old, uh, they, uh, the baby will immediately stretch out to grab a small toy when they are offered. And uh, they, they are able to reach and grab a moving object and pokes at small objects with index finger. So they started to pokes at small objects. Uh, and they start to have a, a better grasp uh, and grasp string between the finger and the thumb. Uh, so this, uh, this is the start of uh, the, the age that they, they start to have inferior pincer grasp. And usually uh, they can release the toy from the grasp by dropping or pressing the toy against a firm, firm surface. But they cannot throw throw the toy yet. Okay. Uh, and also they enjoy casting objects and at this uh, at this age, they started to have permanence of object in which when uh, the toys are uh, falling, they will look correctly uh, on the direction of the fallen toys. Okay, next. <clears throat> For 12 months old, uh, they ha already has a mature grabs in which they will have neat pincer grabs in, in which they can they can grab the uh, small objects using thumb and the tip of the index finger. Uh, and they are able to throw toys for, uh, forwards deliberately compared to the previous uh, age. Uh, if, uh, the nine months age, they are still unable to throw the toys. Uh, so, uh, and also they are able to point index, with index finger at the objects of interest. And usually they, they use both hands freely, but... Um, uh, they hold the any objects with tripod grabs, in which they use the thumb and the and the first two fingers. Okay. Next, <clears throat> for fifteen months old, um, the baby uh, the baby started to pick up string or small ob objects with a precise pincer grabs, uh, and they can manipulate cubes in which they may build a tower of two cubes after they are demonstrated, which means that you show them first and then they, they may be uh, able to build the tower. And also, they will grab crayon with the whole hand using palma grabs. Uh, and they started to uh, imitate to and fro scribble. The John Teng Next. Uh, at 18 months old, they started to uh, have delicate pincer grabs and they started to put index finger on boldly colored items because the visual uh, the, uh, the visual perceptual development is more mature uh, and uh, they they also uh, because the fine motor is developing so they're able to turn sev several pages uh, of book at a time 
and also they uh, instead of palma grabs they hold the pencil in the mid or upper shaft uh, with uh, approximate crude approximation of thumb and fingers uh, and they can do spontaneous uh, to and fro scribble and dots and they also can uh, build tower of three cubes compared to the previous one they only able to build two cube uh, tower of two cubes okay and also they will have to uh, to they will begin to show preference for using one hand next okay uh, at two years old they started to uh, have good manipulative skills in which they will pick up tiny objects accurately uh, places down uh, the object uh, neatly uh, they might be able to uh, complete a simple jigsaw, for example, like matching a square or triangular shapes. Okay, and also uh, the, at this age, they will uh, able to hold pencil uh, uh, in a better uh, in a better way, which in which they use thumb and the first two fingers compared to the previous one. They started to use uh, first they, they grabs the crayon using palma grabs and then. Uh, the using mid and upper shaft and this one they started to uh, hold the pencil uh, at the down shaft towards the point okay uh, and also they will have uh, they will able to draw a uh, draw circular scribble or to and fro scribble and dots and also uh, they might imitate a uh, v shape or vertical lines uh, and they may be able to build the tower of six or seven cubes uh, and they turn stages sing singly, not uh, not not multiple at one time. Okay, next. Uh, for two and a half years old uh, baby, they started to recognize they are self in the photographs uh, because of the uh, visual development, uh, and also they were they will be able to build tower of more than seven seven plus cubes, uh, and they also will be able to uh, insert, uh, complete a jigsaw by recognizing the shape, and their uh, their advance in holding the pencil is improved, in which they have uh, tripod grabs uh, and imitates the they can imitate horizontal line, horizontal line uh, circle and T and V shape. So at three years old, they will start to uh, able to build tower of nine or ten cubes, uh, one or more bridges of three cubes. Uh, they can even thread large wooden head, uh, beads, sorry, uh, and also will be able to close fist and wiggle the thumb. And at this point, they will uh, hold the pencil between the first two fingers and thumb using a very good control. And they can even copy circles. V, H, and T uh, letters. Uh, and also they may be able to draw person with head, but uh, not the other features. Uh, and they also might be able to um, paint with large, large brush or cuts with toy scissors. Okay, for four years old baby, uh, they are better in which they may be able to build a tower of 10 or more cubes and several bridges of three uh, from one model. And uh, they even can build three steps with six cubes after they are demonstrated. And um, they even hold the pencils uh, in a dynamic tripod grass uh, with good controls. Uh, just like us um, and they can even trust a person with uh, uh, with head legs and, and trunk yeah uh, and they even can draw a house but not a complete house uh, and uh, and they can start to uh, name their drawings uh, before they produce the drawings for example uh, i want to i want to draw uh, a flower uh, then only uh, she draws the flower okay next Okay, let's uh, for five years old, uh, the they will be able to build elaborate models in which uh, uh, more complex models, uh, and they will have a very good control in writing and drawings, and they even can copy square, triangle, and uh, all the all the letters I have uh, state I have written here, 
and also uh, they will be able to draw a, a recognizable man with complete head, trunk, legs, uh, arms and all the features like eyes, mouth, nose and they can even draw a complete a house with complete door, windows, roof and chimney and even uh, using a scissor they can cut a strip of paper neatly um, <clears throat> uh, and also they can uh, count their fingers on one hand with the index finger of the other. Yeah, so basically this is just the uh, summary of the fine motor development of uh, baby. Okay, I think that's all for me. Yes, hmm. good. Usually we are trying to put the visual assessment beside the fine motor because if the baby has problem with the vision, of course we, it may be to see the small thing is the fine one, okay? Okay, thank you. The next one. Uh, so my name is Mama Alamis, so I present uh, regarding the visual. So um, for the baby, usually uh, for visual perception is to understand that usually, usually during the infancy, they usually have a very limited vision. So their visions are usually very blur and focus on sources of light and the visual equity is usually low and usually at birth is 6 over 200 and proceedingly as they progress, the visual equity is expected to achieve 6 over 6 by the 5 years of age. And usually we perform a visual screening at the school entry or preschool. So, <clears throat> so for the stages of developmental of visual behaviors, this uh, I received from the birth to 5 years old development textbook. So um, they depict for at least focusing on the first year of development of the visual as this is the most crucial part of the development. So this is the time we can intervene if there isn't a problem we detect. So, <clears throat> but, uh, uh, so first, um, the, sorry, uh, sorry, so first is the birth. So we, the, the birth, we expect the baby will be able to turn their eyes towards a window or any large light source. So because they have very, very, very blurry vision, however, they can focus on a large light source. And for the first month, they usually are able to stare at the object close to their face or show special interest in the human face. This usually we, uh, we expected they have to be uh, interact to with a uh, mother's face or any uh, close relative that are usually uh, close to the uh, baby. So <clears throat> around four to six weeks, um, we expect the baby to be able to have um, like a defensive blink, if you notice. Uh, then around three months, uh, the baby is expected to be able to watch their own hands. So basically, if you notice, they can be able to play and observe their own hand movement and also follow activities in the surroundings. So for example, if anyone is moving an object, they are able to follow it. So um, so usually around three months or so, um, I forgot that, is that uh, in terms of finding object, usually... Um, they be able to make sense of the object unity, meaning the connection between an object. So around six months, um, we expect the baby to be able to look intently at 2.5 centimeter brick at a 20, 30 centimeter uh, distance. So meaning they have, um, by six months, we expect them to have at least visual fixation on object at a distance of a specific size. Um, and then they are able to recognize their uh, career and also familiar with the toys around them and also at six months they are able to look for any partially hidden object so meaning if you hide and uh, your toys that you will see them looking for it at nine months uh, they are able to look intently at a very small object up to one millimeter in size like crumbs the bread crumbs or any like hundred thousand cake decoration meaning the decorations that is very tiny and minute in nature and they're able to use their fingers to poke. This is a fine motor movement. They were explore, exploring. And also, they are, <clears throat> they are, by nine months, they're able to point to demand to the nearby object. Because um, at, this, at this nine months age, when uh, regarding in terms of the object, they are also uh, able to retrieve completely a cover object. Meaning if you cover the object, they will look for it and also retrieve it at the same time. And by the age of 12 months, um, uh, of or one year is usually point to show to object of interest at a distance. So 
at this age also they are able to uh, track an object that is a hidden or when a moving toy is passing through example uh, under table then we can expect the toy to be appear the next so they have an understanding of expectation um for two to three years old um they, they didn't mention anything but in sunflower we mentioned at two to three years old we can do a testing of matching with pictures and by the three years old we can do matching with um uh, letters so these are the visual disorder that is commonly associated with children so first is quint or strabismus where there is misaligned between the two eyes and blyopia is usually uh, associated with uh, reduced in the visual equity of the uh, baby and all other optical problems that affect visual equity. So usually examples, it could be from a serious eye condition or any systematic disorder such as you could have cataract, glaucoma, and retinoblastoma. So it's important that um, you you watch the development of the vision of the child because it's, it's, it's important that you detect early so that you can intervene early. So uh, this is an example of the checklist for vision for the baby first year. This is what we can tell the parents or also we use for you uh, to ask the question and guidance. So example, for the first week, you ask, the, does the baby turn to a diffuse light? Does the baby stare at your face? By second month, you ask if the baby look at your face, the, he has a fixation which is follow your face if you move side to side or any uh, recognizable where he smiles at you. Uh, does the eye, baby eyes move together? So you mentioned there's no uh, uh, stripping mess. And this, table also, is, this table is very nice also. It will guide your colleague for the coming uh, sessions. Uh, how to formulate our knowledge to be uh, a guided questions. Okay, uh, good, good. good. So then uh, by six months, I mentioned, so the six months, you know, which is, uh, so uh, only look, look around for object terrace try to reach the small object and it's squint as we, at this age. So by nine months, uh, does the baby poke or wreck a small object and such as climb 100, meaning they are trying to associate their fine motor movement with the visual. And by, for, by the first year of age or 12 months, the, does the boy baby point to things to demand, meaning they want something or they recognize the carrier around them. Uh, so that's about it from me. So in conclusion is that um, it's important for you to assess the visual development, especially in the first year of life. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you hear me? Can, can. Very clear. Okay. So my name is Abdullah Arif bin Abdul Kadir. 1611661. So today I would like to share about hearing assessment in newborn and children. Okay, next. Okay, so this slide show the timeline for the fetal hearing development. So as we can see, uh, at nine weeks of pregnancy, the indentation appear, whereas baby ears will grow. So at the 18 weeks of pregnancy, baby start to hear sound. So I think hearing is uh, really special because uh, the baby can start here from the uh, womb, not when after the delivery. So uh, what I learned from this, uh, when the pregnant mother get pregnant, uh, the mother should give or talk nicely to the baby because the baby can hear what we say. So maybe we can um, listen to Al-Quran or some music because it can uh, enhance the development of the baby. Okay, so next. So this table uh, show the hearing checklist for the parent. So what a baby can do uh, after the delivery first. So shortly after the birth, uh, the baby can start us and blink at a sudden noise. For example, when they are slamming off door, so the baby can start us. So by the uh, one month, uh, they can notice a prolonged sound such as vacuum cleaner. Okay. And by the end of four months, uh, they can uh, quieten or smile to the sound of your voice, even when he or she cannot see you. 
and then uh, uh, the baby also can turn the head or eyes toward uh, the sound by the end of the four months. And then at the seven months, uh, it can turn immediately to the voice across the room or to very quiet noises made on each side. So next, at nine months, uh, it can listen attentively to familiar everyday sound and search for very quiet sound made out of sight. Okay. Uh, and then also show, uh, show also show uh, show pleasure in bubbling and loudly and tunefully. And then at the end of one uh, one year or twelve months, uh, show uh, the baby will show some response to his or her own name and to other familiar words. May respond when you say uh, no, bye bye, and even when cannot see any accompanying uh, gesture. Okay, so this table is uh, important. Uh, for the parents, because uh, if uh, at any point of this mind, if you notice uh, the baby uh, not in that particular, um, what, we, what we say, we can we expect the uh, baby, for example, at nine months, uh, it can listen attentively to the familiar, or by the end of twelve months, uh, he can respond when we say no or bye bye. But uh, when twelve months, he cannot respond to that. It may be show something that the, 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 the developmental of the hearing has some problem. Okay, for our information, hearing assessment is not routinely done in Malaysia uh, because due to the sources that maybe we cannot afford to do it to every newborn. As for now, in our country, we only screen hearing for baby with high risk. For example, uh, those who have neonatal Down disease or those with um, Down syndrome, for example. So this checklist is really important because as a parent, if you notice this, please go and seek uh, advice from the doctor. Okay, next. So if we suspect the baby has the hearing problem, so we can do some investigation for that. So for hearing test, we can divide the test into two, which is uh, in the newborn and then infant and children. Okay, so the, in the newborn, we have two, which is OAE, ABR, and then infant, we have distraction test, visual reinforcement audiometry, performance and speech discrimination, discrimination test and audiometry. Next, we go first to the newborn. First, we can do the auto acoustic emission, OAE. So, OAE is an earphone produce a sound which evokes an echo or emission from the ear if the cochlear function is normal. So the earphone will produce sound and if the cochlear functionally well, it will produce uh, echo to the uh, earphone. Okay, as you can see in the picture. So the advantage is it is simple and quick to perform. However, um, as we can see, uh, you know, this is not a test of hearing, but a test of cochlear function. So it, it, it tests the uh, sensory part, not the neuronal part. Okay, so it is not so comprehensive. Okay, next. Okay, so another way is by doing the audit, uh, auditory brainstem response, which is ABR. Uh, ABR is a computer analysis of electroencephalogram waveform evoked in response to a series of auditory stimuli. So during sleeping, uh, we give the auditory stimulus via the iPhone and then we record the uh, EEG waveform. So the examiner, uh, the doctor will interpret uh, the uh, EEG waveform. Uh, I, also, I didn't mention detail about the how to interpret the uh, data. However, you can read if you want. So the advantages of this screen is we can screen the hearing pathway from ear to the brainstem. So it is more uh, comprehensive. However, um, so it is time consuming because we need to put baby sleep and then a lot of equipment so some parents didn't like uh, this uh, test due to that. However, this test is really good. Okay, next. 
So we go to the uh, infant and children. So first we can do the distraction test. So this distraction test is the screening. We can screen infant at seven to nine months. Uh, the test uh, the test relies on baby locating and turning appropriately towards sound. But we need to remember this must be before the child develop the ability for object permanence. Okay. So as we can see in the picture, so the examiner will uh, stand behind the baby and then uh, give some sound whether on the right side or on the left side. So the baby um, will uh, turn his or her head towards the sound if the baby heard the sound. However, however, uh, some bit, uh, it is difficult because uh, the baby can com compensate it by using the shadow, smells, or guesswork to locate the presenter. So this test must be uh, doing well by the professional, well-trained professional. Okay. Next. Uh, visual reinforcement audiometry. We can use this to screen infant at 10 to 18 months. Okay. So we can test the hearing threshold. A uh, hearing threshold are established by using the visual reward illumination of toys to reinforce the child head turn to stimuli of different frequency. So this test is like this. So uh, the uh, examiner will give uh, some sound frequency of sound. So when the baby heard the frequency of the sound, he will turn uh, his head or her head to the um, direction of the sound. When the baby turn the head, the toys, uh, there will be a light come from the toys to uh, reward the baby. So we call it elimination of toys. So we can give a different threshold to test the baby by doing this. Okay, next. So this is the performance and speech discrimination test. We can use this to screen children at 18 months to four years. Okay. So by doing, uh, I already put the uh, video uh, in the group WhatsApp. So all of you, I hope that you can see the video. But before, by performing the speech discrimination test, uh, we put like this, okay? And then we say, uh, please say book, okay? Or some things uh, uh, that we, we think it is suitable for the baby, for the children, okay? So this test is a little bit difficult. Uh, so not always done to the baby, okay? So the last one. So this, uh, when the child is, we can say, um, reliable, so we can do the audiometry. So I think the audiometry is, uh, we give the headphone and then uh, tell the child if he or she can hear the voice. So if he or she can hear the voice, please press the button. So we can uh, know the uh, threshold of the uh, hearing loss if they are hearing loss. So basically, uh, next. So in conclusion, uh, hearing uh, test is not routinely done in Malaysia. However, if, pa if parent uh, detect any abnormality in hearing, uh, please come and seek doctor advice. So we can divide the test into two during the newborn and infant. Okay, so that's all from me. Uh, I think you need to add one slide about the, the 10, 10 indication of hearing assessment, even if it is not routine. It means if the patient has severe neonatal jaundice, if has meningitis, is given extreme preterm, uh, the patient with family history of hearing uh, loss, uh, there is about 10 indication. We, we must refer the baby for formal hearing tests until uh, in, in our hospital, we are planning to do it as a routine for our children now, we are planning for that. But just even if it is not yet routine, uh, you must add a slide about that, okay? But I will put it after this, thank you. When, when we, yeah, just to correct it before sending it back to me, okay? Uh, Go ahead, social. Okay, 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, so now let's proceed with social assessment. I'm Hani Afshat Tira, uh, 1614256. Okay, so for social assessment, uh, uh, back, I mean, Okay, so uh, it is how children getting along with people and caring for personal needs. So uh, these two active part particip participation and guidance from people around them, uh, will, the children will develop an understanding of the action, intention, and feeling of others. So this will uh, enable them to form uh, and maintain relationship and to learn convention of the behavior within the society. Okay, next. Okay, so for infant, uh, in six weeks, they will have the social smile, uh, where the smiling emerge and imitation of facial expression. So uh, if at this stage, uh, the smile doesn't occur, so it is a red flag. And then next, uh, the three months. So at three months, uh, they will have sustained social contact. So where, uh, where they smile and other facial expressions synchronize with uh, those of the caregiver. And they also uh, respond with pleasure to friendly holding. And next is six months. So in six months, uh, infants have a growing interest in objects. So they start to mount. Uh, place hand on bottle and pet it, uh, grab feet, and at this point, they are still friendly uh, with the stranger, and they will become more reserved uh, after seven months. Uh, next is nine months. So uh, in nine months, the mounting uh, is still there, uh, but uh, they have this worry of stranger. They have this stranger anxiety. Uh, does the caregiver need to offer reassurance by uh, remaining close to them and also modeling friendly behavior? So uh, in nine months also, they can uh, play peekaboo and wave bye-bye. Uh, so um, they can also understand uh, object permanence. So the red flag in nine months is when they're not sharing enjoyment with others uh, using eye contact or with uh, facial expression. Next is 12 months. So start from 12 months until two years old, their reaction are largely dependent on uh, the caregiver. So the caregiver need to uh, modeling appropriate uh, social behavior for them to develop, uh, to develop. So they will start to drink from cup with two hands, uh, help with dressing. They also demonstrate affection to family and enjoy a joint interactive play with adult. So the red flag in the 12th month is when they did not notice uh, someone new and not play uh, turn-taking games such as uh, peekaboo. Next, okay, so in toddler, for 15 months, they attempt to hold the spoon and they also have this functional play. So functional play uh, can be defined as a play with toys or objects according to their intended uh, function. So for example, uh, toy car, they're pushing uh, the toy car on the floor. For ball, they're rolling uh, the ball on the floor. So uh, this is important uh, as the child will uh, di discover how things uh, will work together. And they also have this uh, of uh, also, uh, they also have a repeated casting when they're uh, in 15 months. Next, in 18 months, uh, they will imitate housework and use spoon well, as well as assist with dressing so at this time they will stop mounting and casting less often and also they like to play contently alone but near with the familiar adult so the red flag uh, is when they lack of interest in playing and also interacting with others in two years old uh, they already know how to put on shoes socks and pants and they also start to toilet training where they are dry by day and also uh, they involve in parallel play. So, parallel, uh, so during this stage, each uh, child begin uh, to watch other children playing and they will play near them. Uh, but uh, they does not play with them. They only play near them but uh, does not play with them. So this is what called parallel play. So from here, they can learn to use a new skill and also create a social relationship. As they play with, uh, as they play near to other, uh, other children, and then they also have pretend play. So pretend play is like uh, being superhero. Like uh, they play, uh, they play some role, uh, like playing mommy and daddy. So, uh, through this pretend play, uh, children will learn uh, what they dislike, what they like, their interests, uh, and they also can uh, consider others. So they uh, at this stage they are actively uh, experimenting. Uh, with 
the social and emotional roles of life. And at this stage also, they have this tantrum when they are frustrated, but uh, the attention is usually easily distracted. So uh, in two years old, the red flag is when uh, they are playing with toys, but tend to drop or throw them rather than use them uh, for their purpose. Because uh, as I said before, in 18 months, uh, usually the casting will be less often. But in two years, uh, if the uh, they uh, tend to still casting more, then that will be the red flag for two years old. And then for 2.5 years old, uh, they may be dry by night, they already eat skillfully and have more sustained role uh, play. So this will help uh, uh, them to develop strong problem-solving approach. And then um, for tantrum, uh, they, uh, they tantrum when taught, and, uh, but they are less distracted. And then for three years old, uh, they eat independently and also wash hands. Uh, and, uh, and also they are dry at night. And at this stage, they have a wide interest uh, in the social world. So they are actively joined in the uh, make believe play. Make believe play, uh, play is uh, the same as the pretend play. And also they understand uh, sharing toys. So in three years old, the red flag is when uh, there is no interest in uh, pretend play or other children. And there is a uh, difficulty in them to uh, notice or understand uh, their self or other feeling. So uh, that's the red flag. And then next, okay, so for four years old, they start to uh, dress uh, independently. So at four to five years old, uh, they grow understandings of rule. So uh, they understand the need to uh, take uh, turn taking in play. Uh, they appreciate uh, the past, the present, so uh, future time. So uh, at this uh, stage, the caregiver need to provide information and explanation of the uh, uh, human act. The red flag is when they unwilling or unable to play cooperatively. And then for five years old, so uh, at this stage, uh, uh, there is increase in understanding of link between uh, people mental state and also their action. So uh, at this moment, they start to choose their own friend and also um, they are cooperative with their co uh, companion and understand what fair play uh, means. And the red flag for the five years old is when uh, they play, um, the, the way they play is different uh, than the way other children at their age play. So uh, as we go by the A. So you can see there are different type of plays such as the functional play, the parallel play, the pretend play. So um, this will, uh, uh, all of this uh, will emerge as the child develop and caregiver uh, is actually uh, uh, very important to play a role in this development because uh, this stage uh, co um, re uh, what we call uh, really closely related to cognitive and also social development. So uh, the development of children uh, friendship can also reflect uh, how their uh, increase in understanding for the social environment. So that's why we can see children who are being neglected, they can have this uh, social uh, developmental issue. So in clinical setting, uh, when we assessing the social behavior, the description of uh, behavior in the house and other social setting can be obtained uh, from the parents. But uh, if uh, at that time, we have uh, enough um, play material, the pit skits, uh, which appropriate to their developmental stage age, uh, then we can uh, do direct observation uh, for that particular age. Okay, I think uh, that's all for me. Okay, thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum. 
Uh, now uh, we can understand for every patient we need to comment about gross motor, fine motor and vision, hearing, okay, and speech. Speech <clears throat> is very important. You cannot comment alone on hearing without speech because if the baby is not hearing well, he will not speak normally. Okay, so we need to add the speech. How many words he can say? This one need to be added to the presentation. Okay, how many words say when he started to pop? Like that, it is very important. Well, the same questions which uh, your colleague did before, which uh, does your child, uh, when he knows you, when he can fix and follow you, when he starts to smile when he started to react, when he is expressing, he needs it to food, he needs to go out, he, when he starts to say no, yes. Uh, also, we need something like that. It will help uh, your colleague and it may be extended to, to other group. I usually, if I found a good uh, uh, presentation, I will keep it for on your names and present it to other groups, okay? So we need also for all of you to try to check again how to make it simplified for uh, counseling the family about the development, okay? An important thing, uh, what is the meaning of global developmental delay? It's a delay in... Uh at least two domains of the development. Yes. So it is two or more, okay? So it is very important even if the patient has delay maintained two, we will still consider him as global developmental delay, which is a bit different than the management. So he need multidisciplinary team like that. It will not go to one team only. He need to go more than uh, two teams. He need to work. Uh, with uh, coordinated pediatric specialist like that, okay? Uh, let us start by the first case. Who will present the first? Uh... Uh, for the first case, uh, I'll be the doctor. Okay. And P3 will be uh, the patient's mother. So we know P3, what's your name? Uh, my name is Muslihana. Muslihana, mashallah. Yes. Good. Good. Okay. So the, okay. The, the patient will be afraid from your very big book now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Make it simple. Make it simple. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, um, Go ahead. Uh, all right. Uh, Assalamualaikum. My name is uh, Muslihana. Uh, I'm. Uh, I am a fifth year medical student. Uh, so, uh, Madam Fitri. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, okay. Uh, so, um, uh, may I know uh, the details of your children? Um, uh, my child's name, his name is Irfan. I call him Irfan. All right. Uh, he is currently two years and 11 months old. Okay. Uh, and then today, um, I, I bring him to rehabilitation clinic for okay. regular follow-up because uh, he has underlying uh, cerebral palsy. Okay. So... Uh, I would like to know more about uh, Madam. Uh, so, uh, do you work or your uh, you are a housewife? Uh, I am a housewife. Okay. Um. Uh. uh your family live in? Uh, my family lives in Kampung Padang Jaya. Okay. Alright. So, uh, first of all, I would like to know about. Uh, the 
uh, birth history. So can you tell me more about the uh, antenatal history? Uh, I mean, uh, how's uh, your pregnancy? Pregnancy actually uh, went very well. I have I have a uh, underlying SLE, right. uh, but it is inactive. Uh, in even during pregnancy, it's just uh, normal. There is no significant event. All, right. uh, the uh, all the antenatal skin, is, antenatal skin is also normal. All right. uh, the only uh, the only thing that I uh, I face is I have a vaginal thrush during pregnancy where I got itchiness and uh, whitish uh, discharge. Uh, That's all. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, that's uh, for internet. Uh, and then, uh, is there any uh, diabetes or hypertension during pregnancy? Uh, no. No. Okay. So, uh, how about the uh, during uh, uh, regarding the vaginal trash? Does it occur uh, near to the perinatal period, or it's uh, before that? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it is uh, before that. Uh, is it within the first trimester? Uh, yeah, it is uh, within the first trimester. And then, um, okay. uh, how about the perinatal period? Is there any competition? Yes. We need to concentrate on the developmental assessment. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, to give okay. a chance for the other group. Okay. To give a chance for the others. Ah, okay, okay. All right, okay. okay. Uh, so uh, we'll focus, uh, we'll go straight to the developmental history. So uh, currently, uh, how's your friend uh, doing? I mean, uh, what uh, uh, Irfan can actually do? Um, Irfan is right now he is uh, 2 years and 11 months uh, mm -hmm. but he is not like uh, the other kids of his age okay uh, he still he still cannot he still cannot walk or run right now he can only sit uh, but with support okay um, and then uh, and then his uh, his head is still weak lah he still uh, weak where he had a poor head control. Okay. Um, okay Doctor Fitri, don't, don't give him the detail unless she asked you. Okay. If she didn't ask, don't give her any details. Okay. All right. I know that you are a good mom and a good doctor, but uh, she must be the initiated. Okay. Uh, so uh, he, uh, he had poor head control. Is it? Yes. Okay. So, um, how about uh, the movement of the limb? Uh, the, does he able to move uh, all his four limbs? Mm. Uh, he is the hands. Able, able he to move. Has, able uh, to move. He has uh, cerebral palsy. So, actually, uh, his upper limb and lower limb uh, is plastic. Oh, I see. Uh, and then, uh, is there any like uh, specific um, uh, post uh, posture that uh, the uh, if I usually uh, have like any uh, clench of the piece? Uh, yeah, and and then his uh, lower limb uh, seizure. In oh, position. okay, I see. Okay. Uh, and then how about uh, uh, hearing? Uh, does he able to uh, respond to any uh, boy, uh, any noises? Uh, uh, he is, um, I think he is uh, able to respond to sound. Mm. And then, 
can he uh, actually utter any words or syllable? Oh, uh, no, he can only uh, babbling and I cannot understand, uh, I cannot understand what, uh, what he want to say. Okay. Uh, how about uh, the visual? Can he actually uh, see object? Uh, actually, my son, he is uh, under ophthalmology clinic. Okay. Uh, because he had a uh, poor vision. All right. So, uh, under ophthalmology, uh, um, what treat, uh, treatment uh, management, how do they manage your child? Um, uh, they prescribe him with glasses because uh, he cannot see near object. Oh, okay. Near object. Okay. Uh, how about uh, his social development? Uh, does he uh, have any uh, strange uh, anxiety to stranger? Uh, right now he is okay even with uh, unfamiliar people. All right. Friendly with everybody. Okay. Okay. Mm. I think uh, I would like to know um, uh, to continue the birth history. Can can I, doctor? Or We you can, can... Uh, target target questions. Okay, all right. Uh, so, uh, uh, I need to know uh, regarding the birth history because um, for cerebral palsy, uh, the first uh, year of life is very important. So, during the perinatal, the uh, uh, Madam Vitri, uh, do you have any complication during the uh, during the delivery? Is there any uh, fetal distress during the delivery? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, for this pregnancy, uh, I uh, there is a fetal distress where it is an emergency. Oh, okay. Uh, at uh, at what week? At uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at thirty two weeks of gestation. So it's preterm, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, how about uh, postnatal? Is there any uh, postnatal complication? Such as, uh, is there any infection? Oh, um, uh, my son uh, was put on ventilator. Oh, okay. Ventilation. Uh, is there any um, jaundice? Post delivery. Uh, yeah, or we had uh, severe had jaundice. Uh, no, severe it's jaundice. Not severe. No, uh, it's not severe. Okay, so there is jaundice, but not severe. How about uh during the early uh during the infancy, meaning within one year. So uh do uh did he develop any seizures? Uh yes, he was hospitalized. Um. Uh, quite many times due to seizure. Oh, so um, did he get uh the uh anti epileptic uh treatment anti epileptic uh, drugs? Uh, no, he, uh, he was not on any anti epileptic. Uh, but right now, uh, doctor give uh, uh doctor give I think uh that through the rectal if he developed seizure. Okay. okay. So, uh, other than she's uh seizures, uh, no other infections such as meningitis. Um, no, no other. But, uh, but he also uh, developed, uh, I think, a chest infection. Oh, he okay. was hospitalized many times. Uh, may I know how how many <laughs> how many times? 
um, I think he was uh, he was hospitalized uh, every three to four months. Oh, I see. Pneumonia. Okay. Other than cerebral palsy, does he has any other medical conditions such as asthma, allergy to any uh, drugs or uh, food? Uh, he does not have any allergy. Okay. Uh, for nutritional uh, status, so um, how frequent uh, did you uh, feed him? Um, um, every because he is on NG tube, so um. I give him four hourly right now. Okay. Uh, uh on NG tube. So the amount. The amount of milk. Mm, about four meal each. each oh. Four meal. Okay. Um. Fifteen. Uh. What types of milk? Uh. I give him a Dutch lady chocolate milk. Okay. Uh. Okay. So. Uh. For. Um. Uh, so for vaccination, does he complete uh his vaccination? Uh yeah, he he completed all the immunization schedule. Uh, any uh additional vaccine that uh you did uh add on? Um no, no. Okay. So. Uh, for family history and social history, uh, just now you said that you live in Kampung Padang, right? Yes. Please, we have. Okay. We need to target for right. gross motor, okay. fine motor, speech. Uh, uh, leave okay. all the other. We are not in neurological examination now. Um, you have two minutes to ask the mother questions, so you can tell me what is uh, the current age of the baby by, by your assessment. We know his, uh, he is now like three years, but I need to tell me for gross motor, he is approaching how many months or how many years for fine motor like that. Can you? Pardon? Can you do that? I need you to tell me now the baby Gross motor, how, how many months? The fine motor, how many months? What about hearing? What about vision? What about social? Like that. Oh, okay. So, um, so for gross motor, uh, he's able to sit. Uh, currently, he's able to sit, but with support, uh, which is not appropriate to his age. Which is two year old and at uh, two year old and eleven months. Sit with support. Uh, should be, uh, around uh six months old each, and he also had uh, poor control. Uh, uh, poor head control. Uh, where uh he's uh, uh unable to control uh his own head, and then uh. So I believe that uh, he's unable to even uh, prone from supine to prone position. Okay. And then um, for fine motor, uh, he's able to move his limb. However, uh, uh, his limb is in a spastic position. And for visual, uh, he's under ophthalmology uh, and prescribed with glasses due to uh, short sightedness. And then for speech, uh, uh, for speech, uh, he's only mumbling, and he's able uh, to hear. Uh, uh, and for social, uh, he's uh, friendly with uh, everyone uh, with no stranger anxiety. Okay, I think you need to re rewrite it again to me. Okay. Okay. Uh, usually, if we are doing it like that, we, we must be able to make 
targeting. I know this is this is our teaching. Don't worry about that. We are just a try. Mm -hmm. uh, usually in medicine, you have some target with a limited time. Okay. If you are in the clinic, if you are in the hospital, if you are in the ward. So you must be able to come to conclusion. This child looks like have global global developmental delay, yes? Uh, okay, yes. evidenced by uh, gross motor between three to four or to five months because he can sit supported from the first month, okay? Yes. From six months, he can even start unsupported, but he has a head leg. Yes, head leg. So this support may be, fo may be false one. You are trying just to push and the support is not sitting and I am supporting him. No, I am supporting the baby from A to Z because the head lagging, it will occur less than three months. Okay, you must comment about fine motor, what, what he can do, but social, okay. He knows you, he knows your voice, he is responding to anything or not. Okay, yeah. also the hearing, the hearing, he is startled to voice, he is all this, the vision, the vision, the most important, you must ask, you must come from the zero point which we presented before, he can fix or not, he can follow or not. This is number one, at four months, at 40 days, if the baby unable to follow, uh, to fix and to follow, remember this FF, fix and to follow, you must take care. Either he has developmental delay or has a problem with the eye. Okay, so we must comment uh, about that as a developmental and you will give me the final conclusion, how old he is, our assessment now from all parameters which you speak before, okay? Uh, just consider it as uh, uh, your, you need to finish it today, inshallah. Okay. Uh, let us go for the second uh, presentation. Uh, okay, uh, Bismillah. So uh, uh, I will be the doctor. My name is Muhammad Faiz bin Muhammad Long. And uh, Safia will be the patient's mother. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, Madam Sophia, um, may I know why you bring your child today? Um, she's having a fitting episode. Oh, okay, fitting. Uh, so, uh, what happened before the fitting? Does the uh, patient is sleeping or is doing something? Yes, it's actually happened in the early morning where she uh, she suddenly developed uh, fitting right after waking up from the sleep. Yeah, right after we can, uh, be before uh, he sleeps, does you notice any change in the behavior of the patient? Uh, I didn't notice that. So. Uh, is there any headaches? Any? Uh, no, no I, she didn't complain of that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, during the fitting, uh, is there any stiffness or jerky movement of the body? Yeah, yeah, I, I see that uh, there were jerky movement, but particularly on his uh, right limbs, right oh, okay. uh, hand and legs. Oh, it's on the right side and not involving yes. the left side? No, it's only the right side. Okay, uh, so for how long it happens? Um, from for about forty five minutes. Oh, okay. So, uh, during the seizure attack, uh, is there any uh, other manifestation such as drooling of saliva, rolling of eyeball? Yes, yes. Uh, there's drooling of saliva and yeah, uh, her eyeballs is uh looking upwards. And there yeah. is also she also uh unable to. No, Does he wet himself? Oh, yes. oh, okay. Um, do you attempt to uh, call him during, when, during the surgery attack? Ah oh, yes, I tried to call her, but she did not respond. Okay, okay. Uh, is there any bluish discoloration of any of the body parts? Ah uh, no, that's not. Does the patient, does the uh, your child uh, bite her tongue or clench her teeth? 
ano, Aril, no, this okay. time. So, uh, you wait until how long before you uh, bring your child to the hospital? Actually, uh, I didn't wait. Uh, for the first for the first 10 minutes, I I tried to give her uh, the medication that is put in the rectum. Uh, since uh, she's already have that medication. And then uh, the, the seizure didn't resolve. So I immediately bring her to the emergency department, but she's continued to fitting for 45 minutes to get, uh, altogether. Okay, so uh, you mentioned the, the medication given is uh, the rectal medication. So is there any other medication that is being injected into the patient? Um, at home, no, but uh, I'm not sure what happened in the emergency. Okay. So when the uh, rectal medication does not work, so what else uh, the doctor at the emergency did? Sorry? Uh, because the medication uh, via rectal does not work, so uh, do you know what the medication that the doctor did at the emergency department? I'm not sure, but uh, they were putting uh, medication through IV line. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, before the patient patient has a seizure, uh, is there any fever or vomiting? Uh, no. There's no fever. There's no vomiting. Uh, is there any uh, diarrhea? Ah, uh, no. Okay. Is there any uh, shortness of breath or cough? Okay. Yes. Faiz, yes, in, the exam, in the exam situation, we must listen carefully to the examiner question. I asked you to assess the development okay, of the child. So don't distract because this sometimes uh, will consider against you. Despite you are really good in that area, but he, he will say, you, you didn't settle the re requested order. I need to answer for the, the four or five parameters which you spoke about. So target, tell her, sorry, I, I will discuss this uh, at the end like that. And at the end, I will stop you, don't know. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, Madam Safiya, I would like to know about your child's uh, development. So, okay. uh, so, uh, is, is your child currently uh, already walking? Ah, uh, yes. She's able to walk. Okay, uh, she's already walking. So, I want to know, do you, uh, while she walks, uh, does uh, her feet go closely together or still, uh, uh, still broad and separated? Uh, no, it's closely together. Okay, la, la. Okay, feet closely together. Okay. Uh, can your child run? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, where, where she can she... run, she can, she can jump. <clears throat> okay, she can jump. Uh, does your child already start to uh, climb the stairs? Yes. Okay. She... Uh, does she climb uh, without support or you have to support her when she climbs. Uh, no, she can climb uh, by herself. Okay. Then, um, can your child uh, draw the trying uh, any shapes? Mm, she can draw, but uh, her drawing doesn't seem so neat. She's She's unable to hold the pencil um, very well. Okay, okay. Mm. Uh, can, uh, can your child pick up object from containers? Pick up object from containers, yes, she can. Uh, while she picks the object, do you notice her grabs? Is it, uh, is it pencil grabs or? She's uh, using all her pin, all her, all her palm to grab the objects. Mm, I noticed that he used um, her palms instead of using a finger. 
Uh, can she play with uh, cubes? Yes, she can. Uh, usually, how how many cubes uh, she play to get uh, at once? Mm. How many cubes? You mean? Uh, I mean, does she play with uh, six cubes or only three cubes or two cubes? You mean building a tower or what? Uh, can can she build a tower? Ah uh, yes, yes, she can build a tower, very high tower. More usually more than. More than nine tower. Okay. Uh, can she colors neatly? Um, that one um I noticed that uh she could not uh color within the line. So usually the coloring is quite messy. Okay. Uh, can she draw a circle? Mm, yes, but not neat. And then, uh, can she uh, cut a paper with scissors? Mm, yes. But not neat. Okay. Like, not neat. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, I would like to ask you regarding the language. Uh, can she talk uh, currently? Yes, she can talk. Okay. Can she have some conversation with you? Yes. She usually tells stories about her friends. Okay. So about her social, uh, does she have any friends? Uh, yes, but not many because of her illness. So he okay. she uh, rarely go to school. Okay. Uh, can she play together with her friends? Um, I see there's no problem with playing with friends. She's okay with playing. Okay. Uh, do you notice that she tries to uh, do house chores like she's trying to uh, sweep the floor or trying to wash? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, and then I want to ask about her uh, uh, birth history. Uh, at, uh, is she born term? Mm, yes. Okay. Uh, at how many weeks? 37 or 38? 37 weeks. Uh, what is her birth weight when, when 2.5 kilogram. Okay, uh, do you have any problem during the delivery? Like mm. traumatic delivery of C section? No. Was normal. Okay. Uh, do you have any medical uh, condition during your pregnancy? Uh I just have an uh, anemia, but uh, not that severe. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Uh, does your child have any uh, jaundice after delivery? No, there's no jaundice. But um, on her 14 days of life, uh, she had problem with her um, her blood vessels that connecting to her lung and her heart. So okay. she was then appointed, uh, she was then uh, admitted to the PICU. Okay. So, um, do you uh, breastfeed the child? Uh, yes, but until 14 days of life only. Okay. Uh, at, at what age you start to give her uh, so you mean when, when you breastfed her until 14 days uh, after the 14 days do you give her only formula milk or you give her formula milk mixed with breast milk um, because uh, she is admitted to the PICU so the mix is formula milk that a hospital oh. gave okay. so uh, at what age you start to win the child I start 
I started to give her um food a bit late at age of one year, one year old, where I give her uh, porridge and blend it with vegetables and fruits. Eh, fruits, like vegetables and chicken. Uh, does she have any nutritional problems? Uh, like not eating? Yeah. Is um, she taking adequate food? Currently, you mean? Uh, yes, currently. Uh, so currently, uh, she's actually a picky eater. She don't like to eat vegetables much. But she usually ate on time. Okay, how many times she eat per day? Mm, three to four times. Okay. Uh, do you notice any problem with your with your child's vision and uh, hearing? No. Okay. Okay, uh, doctor, I would like to conclude my uh, findings. So, uh, sorry, Madam Safiya, what is your child's name? Uh, my child's name is Iman. Okay, Iman. Can, okay. Uh, so, she has a, a cardiac problem. Yes. And also, uh, does she... Since uh, so your child have seizures, so I'm thinking of epilepsy. So is she diagnosed with epilepsy? Uh yes. Uh, that's why I told you she already have the medication. She actually was diagnosed with epilepsy. Uh, since two years ago. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I would like to conclude uh, my finding. So uh, in mind. Uh, with uh, who have an underlying cardiac disorder and epilepsy diagnosed two years ago. So uh, she, uh, she has a normal milestone for her uh, gross motor, a language and social, except for her fine motor, which has a delay evident by uh, inability to, uh, to color neatly and and uh, an inability to draw uh, to draw a shape which is uh, so uh, she, her current fine motto uh, master is only at uh, three years old uh, because uh, she can play uh, with uh, a tower of nine cubes and uh, cut a scissor mm. And, okay. and for her other milestone is uh, at the age of six years old, evident by ability to uh, already walk confidently and run and jump. For gross motor, and for her language, she can already converse well. And for her social, she can already uh, play with friends and imitate her housework, which are all six years old. She has a delay only in the uh, in the fine motor, and she do. so she did not have uh, the global development the delay. What about social? Okay. Uh, her social is also okay. Uh, she can uh, play with friends. Hearing and vision. And, and uh, hearing and vision is also okay as uh, the child can converse with her mother. So you your diagnosis is. Uh, so my diagnosis of the child is uh, she has uh, an epilepsy with uh, with fine with fine motor delay uh, at the age of three years old. So she is a six years old, matched with her age for developmental but delay only on. Must give the complete message, yes. Uh, so, uh, she is a six year old child. Uh, the developmental age is six year old for gross, for gross. So, uh, language and social, except okay. for fine motor, which is three years old. Okay. So, isolated fine motor uh, delayment. What can be the cause? Mm. 
ماشر كم تو ذا نيتشر يعني ذا فيلد ان فرونت اوف يو وات از ذا بروبلم وذ ذا بيبي شي هاز ابيلبسي يا شيخ ابيلبسي مي كونسيدر ات مي بي I wonder if I will like uh, if uh, in your situation. I wonder if the anti-epileptic medication can affect sometimes the fine motor or not. Okay, I would like to reassess the child uh, again to to see if there any discrepancy in the times of assessment. That's why you must work in medicine by wise manner, and you will be accepted. If the examiner ask you a question you don't know, you must tell. Uh, I, I cannot remember. I would like to revise this into the lecture about that uh, important point. So sometimes our uh, software is not enough to carry everything, <laughs> okay? and it will build with time. So if you ask a question, for all of you, please don't block, don't be afraid, and keep natural. I remember the, during the uh, in my, in my RCB, sometimes the, the examiner go and ask you, this baby got a brick with hepatitis B, how much is the percentage? So I tell him the percentage is 18%. If, if you also carry AIDS, how much is it? You may know the number, you may not know. I know that it is less than that. Really, it may be less than one, but I cannot uh, exactly remember the number now. I would like to revise. Sometimes even you said I will ask my uh, senior, senior colleague like that. So be 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 simple. Don't be panic. Okay. So we got now one example of global develop. Uh, no. The first is global developmental delay, the second one, and we must set global developmental delay in one, two, three, okay? The second one, it is appropriate for age for the three, but delay on the fine motor, okay? Uh, the third the presenter. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, my name is Hazira. So uh, the, uh, I'm going to discuss about the differential diagnosis of each case. So for the first uh, case, which is cerebral palsy, okay, uh, according to the uh, history uh, that uh, I have just uh, get just now, okay, so basically, um, uh, Irfan, two years, 11 months, uh, so going to the rehabilitation, uh, rehabilitation clinic, uh, having underlying cerebral palsy uh, on regular follow-up, but currently uh, no active, uh, chief com with, with the no active complaints, right? So uh, I'm decide uh, to, uh, for my part, I'm decide to discuss about the uh, differential diagnosis of uh, cerebral palsy. So next slide. So uh, I'm not sure, but uh, here I get from the from the up to date uh, for the sorry. Uh, differential diagnosis. Sorry. sorry, sorry for you. Okay, we can all of us can go through this one. Okay, you can just it, it to the group. Can you just bypass it? Uh, what is the the area of uh, developmental assessment? Uh, sorry, doctor. Sorry, pardon. Developmental assessment. Uh, yeah, for developmental assessment. Uh, uh, can, sorry, <laughs> sorry. You can run. You can run. Uh, you can run your. Uh, uh, can slides. Slide. Okay, go ahead. Continue. Uh, run. Continue. Just, yeah. And next. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one I will I will accept or not as echoes. 
Oh yeah, the uh, course. How, how can you how can you diagnose the ataxia? Uh, ataxia, uh, ataxia is um, basically it is a uh, loss uh, of the uh, lost co uh, control of the balance how? of a person. Yes, clinical okay. clinical diagnosis. Clinically, I think uh, we can uh, based on the physical examination, uh, we can do the coordination examination. Okay. So what did you suspect if the patient is ataxia, his development can be affected? So for the ataxia, I think for the developmental milestone, uh, maybe for the gross motor, they're not able to walk unsteadily. Yes, so as uh, this wide-based gate, or the uh, with, uh, yes, with non-Muslim drunkard gate, okay. okay. So he may be a bit delayed. What else? What is about his fine motor? About, about the fine motor, uh, I think maybe um, uh, they cannot, uh, they cannot, um, they cannot hold the object. So uh, they, cannot they cannot uh, target. They cannot target. They cannot target the object. Writing so, properly. So he may look like uh, slightly delayed. Okay. What about his vision? Okay. Vision, um, for the vision, I think, uh, for the vision, for the vision. Who can tell here, if the patient has a taxi, what you will find in his eyes? Uh, screen? No? Yes, not screen, not screen. Not screen, not screen. Uh, uh, what you will see? Mm. Nystagmus. Nystagmus. Oh, yeah, yeah, nystagmus. It's very important. Yeah, yeah. So also nystagmus doesn't affect his visual ability or not. It can affect. Okay. okay. What about the speech? What is the type of speech in case of the patient has ataxia? Speech. Slurred speech? Slurred speech. Slurred speech. Yeah, a toxic speech or a oh, speech, speech or a slow yeah. speech. Uh, that's why it is it is very important. You will find this patient maybe looks like uh, has a global developmental delay or has borderline. You must to be able to say his age uh, is like that, but his developmental age for fine motor, everyone you are going to assess. That is our uh, today uh, lesson. I'm trying just to give me, you the benefit of the growth and the development because it is a very simple if you go through it systematically and you can secure uh, in your pocket uh, a good bus mark if you are systematized. Otherwise, if you are not systematized, you may lose. I remember one of our <laughs> I remember one of our colleagues, he's, he's a very good really clinician. But during the exam, he is very hairy. He doesn't notice that the child is Down syndrome because sometimes you are panic, so you are not concentrating. You asked him, can you do please uh, developmental assessment? So he, he hurry to do fine motor, gross motor like we are doing. Uh, and at the end, he gives the age. And he asked you why you give the age, how much? He is 12, but he tell me this child already is about 20 months. What can be the cause? He still doesn't notice. Do you know sometimes if you are caring for the baby of Down syndrome and give him some head cover and they make some, uh, he doesn't notice. He said uh, generally it may be and they speak general. He doesn't notice that the child at that point has uh, Down syndrome. So he filled him and he, he gave him 50% for development and he cut 50% because he cannot pick the cause now. That is the same. I may say this child has some also delayment due to ataxia. Okay, that is my point, which you must be very, very, very uh, good observer. You will observe the patient with ataxia. You will observe the patient with cerebral palsy. 
but doesn't it doesn't mean during developmental assessment you will forget and they need to tell him this is spastic or non-spastic or ataxic yes if you feel if you find ataxia it is a very clear even spastic is very clear the patient has scissoring and the like that so you can say this patient looks like cerebral palsy spastic quadriplegic but his developmental assessment to go at that direction this patient has ataxia Inshallah, I think we planned to present one uh, neurological examination, yes? Is it for your yeah. group? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Okay, we hope to be ready, Inshallah. Uh, maybe this weekend, if I have time, we can do it. Okay. Can you continue mm -hmm. the slides to, to choose if we are choosing something for development or not? Uh, doctor, before that, uh, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, about the uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, about the cerebral palsy, if you want to take the history taking uh, for cerebral palsy patient, do we need to um, take the history taking uh, and then uh, do we need to ask about uh, to differentiate whether it is spastic, ataxic or dyskinetic based on the history taking that we take or no? Yes, of course. And this is under clinical examination, mm -hmm. but you can ask through the history is the patient able to walk or not. He may take you his walking but unstable. Uh, what about he is doing like seizuring of his lower limb? Seizuring is diagnostic test, uh, diagnostic which is very important. Okay, he has seizuring of his lower limbs. Okay, he's spastic his upper limbs. You can just know that about the type, okay? So you must you must come to the conclusion and it is easy, inshallah. Uh, can uh, uh, continue, can I see the next slides, please? Okay. After this is Oski. Okay, let us go for Oski because I need to pray Zohar and I have another meeting at two. <laughs> Okay. So this is the um, what is the condition that can be seen by the uh, illustration? Anybody? Photonia. Hypotonia. No, uh, this is uh, actually this is uh, Zeri. Zeri, yes. Of the legs. The leg. This is crossing crossing of both leg known as scissoring. Yes. And it is basognomonic. Basognomonic okay. okay. What are the types of condition? Uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, we know that uh, they are uh, like spastic, that's kinetic, and attached and others. What are the risk factors for uh, cerebral palsy? Prematurity. Yeah, prematurity, HIE, hypoxic ischemic, ischemic encephalopathy, uh, and a congenital infection. Uh, so uh, next slide. So these but, are. Uh, it is uh, it is better for you if you are giving example to put the main cause. Yeah. I mean it may be antenatal, natal, postnatal. Oh, yeah. Like uh, you're right. Uh, Even, no, I mean if you are going to choose, choose one from everyone. I know that the antenatal oh, okay. is, uh, is the most common, up to eighty percent, uh, like prematurity and the infection. Uh, perinatal hypoxia, postnatal meningitis, like that. You just, uh, uh, I am just telling you, so you are covering everything. Okay. Okay. Good. Continue. Okay. That is the answer. Yes. Okay, uh, this is my case, 18 months old girl, re first referred 10 months ago. At four months, she suffered recurrent episode of otitis media, hospitalized twice with pneumonia and prolonged otitis media. Hearing test performed at seven months of age, revealed profound hearing loss mainly in her uh, right ear, and the brain stem auditory evo response test uh, confirmed the hearing loss. And ventilatory tubes were inserted, uh, but patient had no dysmorphic features or abnormal neurological signs. So uh, repeated developmental examinations uh, during the follow-up at 18 months of age uh, uh, as 
uh, the findings is as follow. Uh, she can walk with one hand held, uh, able to bang two cubes and points at object with index finger, babbles loudly in long re repetitive syllables, imitates playful sounds, exam uh, for example, cough, uh, imitates housework and can use spoon well and requires assistance with dressing uh, and also can uh, place contently alone. So uh, the neurological examination showed mild hypotonia, but the lab test and torture status were all normal uh, with the metabolic workup also normal. So uh, can any one of you describe briefly this, uh, this patient's problem and what would be your diagnosis and the causes of this diagnosis? Faiz, nak try? Uh, this patient, uh, he has a problem of, of gross motor because uh, she has to walk with one hand held because supposedly at the age of 18 months, she can already walk with her feet close together. But uh, she has a, a normal, uh, she has a normal social and, and okay, uh, her, she also have a problem with her language because she only babbles loudly. She should already have uh, at least uh, some vocabularies at 18 months. But her social is okay, she can already use spoon and uh, dress with assistance and play content with loan. And for fine motor, uh, I'm not sure if I'm but I think it's okay. So she has a delay in uh, in language and gross motor. Okay, uh, part of part of it is correct. So basically, this patient has a uh, motor developmental skills uh, of twelve months level, and also language skills of nine months level, which is a. Uh, inappropriate to her age of 18 months old. So uh, because uh, it, uh, it is a delay of um, two or more uh, domains, so we might, uh, it's possible, possibly the diagnosis would be global developmental delay. And uh, for this patient, the causes uh, is fragile X syndrome. So uh, for the next OSCE, chief, com chief complaint, A, a nine months old Malay boy presented to pediatric clinic, SASMED, with complaint of unable to sit from lying position and less interaction with surroundings. Next. So a little bit uh, birth history of A, he was delivered at full term by cesarean section with appropriate birth weight. Uh, the child was admitted in NICU up to his seventh days of age due to perinatal asphyxia, stage two. Okay, you can see the staging of HIE on the table at the right side. Okay, next. So, as a medical officer in the clinics, please assess his developmental milestone. So, can anyone uh, tell me, uh, share, what is the normal development that we expect for nine months old baby? Anyone? Anyone want to try? Can I try? Okay. For gross motor, we would expect uh, at nine months old uh, can stand with support and uh, sit steadily. Okay. Um, for fine motor, we would expect uh, pincer grabs or scissor grabs. And then okay. for uh, social, uh, social speech and language, we would expect uh, sound, uh, localizing sound above. Uh, and uh, syllable, combined syllable, and then for social, we would uh, uh, expect uh, social anxiety. Uh, thank you, Amira. So, as a medical officer, that's what we expect from the patient. Okay, all of this. Okay, so next. So, the finding uh, on the patient for the gross motor, he couldn't sideline in right or left side from lying position. For the fine motor, no reaching and digital grasp with left or right hand. For vision, 
only cool fix and follow adapt faces, condon fix and follow spinning black ball from 12.5 cm, hearing, cool locate, voice at near level with minimum sound, speech only had vocalization, cognition, he had no social smile. Okay, so from this finding, uh, is there anybody want to guess something or suspect something in this patient? From the finding, what's your opinion? Is there any opinion? You can um, banding can with what we expect and then this finding. Anyone want to try? Okay, so basically, uh, from this finding, we know that there are grow we they are uh, what we call it um prominent uh, de uh global developmental delay as we can see for the cognition he had no social smile at all although he currently nine months old so it's really um had a bad uh, uh the baby had a very delay in the development so okay so next so this is a very important point. Sometimes the small baby doesn't look like presenting uh, his delayment unless he approach the milestone. When he came to six months and he doesn't sit, we will start to worry. He buzzed at eight and the good red flag, so are diagnosing. So many cases of this will be diagnosed a bit late, not because we we are not good, but because the presentation of the symptom will occur on the usual time, so you can diagnose it, okay? okay. So next, uh, open further physical examination and investigation. The findings for nervous system examination, there was uh, hypertonia on the right side and hyperreflexia uh, on the right side also, uh, the EEG, uh, suggestive or abnormal record due to the presence of sharp transient over both anterior temporal, posterior temporal, and occipital region. Uh, the MRI brain uh, results still pending. So, uh, is there anyone want to guess the provisional diagnosis up to this point? Okay. So, the uh, next. So, the provisional diagnosis for this case uh, is a uh, global developmental delay uh, secondary due to uh, secondary due to uh, spastic One. hemiplegic cerebral palsy uh, why is plastic hemiplegic cerebral palsy uh, because they are underlying uh, hie stage 2 during the delivery and then upon the physical examination that means uh, the clue that we have is hyperreflexia and hypertonia that may has that may uh, suggest spastic, and then it, it's, it's occur only on the right side of the body. So uh, it is hemiplegic. So we call it spastic hemiplegic cerebral palsy. And then because of there are many developmental delay, the patient also have global developmental delay. So this is the uh, case for this OSCE. Okay, for the fourth case, um, so this is a four-month-old baby with the image showing uh, congenital corneal opacity. So the mother noticed uh, there's a opacity. So what do you think would be the possible cause? Um, anyone would like to try? Hmm. Hmm? Yeah, okay, true. CMV, those plasma, okay. So basically, a con infection, right? So usually, what do you think the main domain will be affected? Vision and fine motor. Vision, okay, vision and motor. So, what do you expect from the visibility of four months old? At least. Able to maintain fixation. Yes, true. Maintain fixation. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. So, so, so uh, come back. Yeah. This one, if, if you saw any corneal cloudiness, you must uh, consider three causes, mm. which can be cataract, can be glaucoma, 
and they can be a little of blastoma sometimes, yeah. malignant tumor of the retina, okay? That's why we must do the red reflex for every newly delivered baby, okay? So of course, it's, of it's course it's, uh, cataract can be due to congenital infection like that, glaucoma can be congenital. Details after that. Try to be broader in your start so you will not miss an important thing. Yeah. Okay. Please uh, mention. So you can add uh, after this the potential yes. to be cataract, glaucoma, retinoblastoma, uh, and specific yeah. cause. And commonly we should um, take note is the rubella, which is one of the common congenital causes. You mentioned visual domain, and the third is the ability to maintain fixation and wash yeah. on hand. You must write what is the meaning of abbreviation of torship. Oh, okay. Before it was torch, then they make it torches, then they make it torships. They are they adding a lot, so you can add it, please. Okay. 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 Uh, so uh, last one is this picture of, okay, what do you think this is? Study pics, anyone? Pain, pain. Hmm? Ah, uh, yes. Strabismus. yes, correct. So this no, screen also. Not correct. Not correct. Oh, not correct. Yeah, must, yeah, she must uh, give a complete diagnosis. Oh. If you are able to be complete, don't, don't accept it to be partial. Oh. Where is the sequence? There is this. There is malalignment of both eyes, mm -hmm. which is known as squint. But if it's squint on the right or on the left? On the left eye. Left, right? <laughs> yeah. from, the, right. from the right. Huh? Left. From the baby position is from the left. 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 So left eye. Convergent left or divergent? It is very simple. Oh, inversion. So I would <laughs> like my first impression, to be honest, my first impression, it looks like it is left side. Conversion, squint. Is it better or squint alone? Oh, better. So now in year five, you must be able to give us like a, a, a bit detailed diagnosis. Don't say nephrotic syndrome. You, you must say it is primary or secondary. Is it uh, steroid responsive or not responsive? Is it whatever? Okay. So you must be able to give us some more detail even for the initial diagnosis okay uh, is this the last one yes and this one is the last one okay, okay so uh, okay I, enough for me i think you can read the quiz i have 10 minutes only to break <laughs> uh, so you need to, okay, that's how many quiz is it only one uh, another four Another four quiz. Mm -mm. Okay, okay. I can uh, leave you to to discuss it together. Uh, thank you for your effort. I'm happy that you are preparing nicely. Uh, at the same time, I I need you to make correction for the point which you speak about, uh, and then send me all your presentation. Okay. Uh, you are the one who is uh, keeping the video, or it is Farah? Sister Farah, Sister Farah. Under, uh, okay. Side. Farah. Okay, so you need just to send me the please uh, presentation, uh, your presentations after correction. Okay, uh, thank you, and see you inshallah. It may be if I have time at that weekend, we can either go to complete our uh, first to complete our. Uh, uh, what is this uh, procedures? Okay, okay. Uh, it may be inshallah. I I think you will shift uh, next week to another. Yes, correct to ONG posting next week. So ONG. Okay, so I may try to to call the next group with me. To, to make the, to present for them, your group to present for them the neurological exam. Is it okay? But hoping, inshallah, during this weekend, I will finish the procedures with you.
Okay, that's And is. there is a, a doctor, uh, what's her name? In the previous year, alhamdulillah, who passed already, I think she is one of the good year five. Her name is year five, Afika. Afika, I may send her uh, number to one of you. Uh, she can give you also the procedures done by that group. It was a good also. You can mix it together, inshallah, okay? Uh, continue your uh, presentation and bully uh, for me to pray Zohar, okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. So kita kena continue kan? Oh, kita kena continue. Ha ah, dia suruh continue. Hari. Sila buka slide. Alright, jap jap. Oh, eh, tapi tadi kau buka jawapan terus kot. Sebab aku ingat doktor nak cepat. Okey, apa dia tak perasan dah. Okey, nampak. Staff nak jawab tu. Okey. <laughs> right. Okey, so Uh, a three-year-old girl who is brought in by her mother have been, been screened by the child health nurse as being developmentally delayed and subsequently referred by GP. Her mother had noted that she has poor interaction with the family and peers and she constantly playing alone. She also did not drive by day. So what do you think is the main domain affected in her developmental assessment? Okay, Sophia. Uh, obviously social because <laughs> because she has poor interaction with family and peers usually at the age of three year old uh, she can play well with um, uh, apa? her friends okay okay so that too. Uh, next what is the possible age for her development anyone want to answer Okay, no one. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's 18 months because uh, um, this stage they constantly play alone. Okay, so for it uh, because uh, she's three years old but she constantly playing alone. So uh, usually uh, this will occur in 18 months uh, developmental age. And because uh, she also did not dry by day, Um, uh, also suggest that uh, this is uh, lower than two years old because by two years old, they already uh, have uh, dry by day. Okay, next. Okay, the last question. Uh, it's actually, uh, I need to add some. Uh, what is the normal uh, social development for three years old child? Okay, so I will just answer. I mean, Okay, so they will eat independently, uh, dry at night and actively join uh, make believe play with other children. Make believe play uh, is the same with uh, pretend play. Okay, that's all. Next. I have questions. Oh, listen. Uh, dry at night too, maksudnya toilet training ke? Uh-uh. Yeah. Okay. Kan dry at night tu maknanya malam dia dah ni lah kan? Hmm, toilet training. Uh, uh, toilet training lah. Dia tak ada dia toilet dia training. Night. Alright. Ini ke yang panggil wetting the bed ni kan? Hmm. -mm. Uh, bed wetting. Oh dia kan scientific dia eh? Apa dia? And you rest this kan? Dia nampak screen. Sekejap. Belum. Belum. Okay. Okay. Uh, apa nombor satu tadi? Child age. Uh, okay, yang ni uh, a child is seen walking on narrow line and dancing to music. Okay, so based on this uh, milestone, what is the child's age? Anyone? Five years old. Yeah, betul. Five years old. So uh, this is a domain apa yang walking on narrow line and dancing to music? Gross motor. Gross motor. Okay, give uh, one other thing the child can do from three other domain. Uh, untuk find motor, five years old, boleh buat apa? Watch men. 
pink, large, red, brown. Color, color, color neatly. Draw one X Y Z letters. Eh color neatly, apa tu lah? Color neatly. Eh tak ada. Uh, <laughs> betul betul betul. Color neatly square, ah uh, triangle. Lepas tu tadi apa yang man with hat and trunk tu? Okay untuk speech and language for Fahir. Uh, dia boleh bagi tahu apa? He can tell. Four oh, colors. In sentence. Able to speak to three sentence. Eh? In sentence. Uh, yang tadi yang able to tell colors tu sampai four years kan? Ya kurang yeah, yeah. Uh, Dia yang fahis yang macam boleh can tell times, tell birthday. Uh, untuk social. Dress with everyone. Dresses. Uh, Make the leaves play. Dress and undress. Nice shoelace. Sweater. Hmm, okay. Alright. Next. Ayo ni untuk yang five years ni. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so uh, for uh, Oski two, uh, what is the best shown available? Not best. Yes, correct. Okay. Next, purpose of the test. What is the purpose of the test? Anyone? In motto. Quality. Quality. Okay. Uh, feel. Uh, so, uh, can someone fill the fill in the blank for the each for each uh, picture? Hana, 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 uh, Hana ke Hani? <laughs> uh, Hana, Hana. Hana, Hani. Uh. Uh, fill in the blank. Uh. <laughs> uh. Boleh? Uh, boleh tapi... It's okay. Sama-sama belajar. So, uh, step each rapper. Step uh. oh. Oh. Okay, uh, get. Hmm? Uh, draw a circle. Circle <laughs> five. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, sorry, read the answer, please. Okay. So, for bridge. So, yang git tadi, uh, uh, yang yang steps tu 5 to 6, yang git tu 3 to 4 years old, and then draw a circle in 3 years old. Alright. Okay, uh, so intellectual disability, uh, at what age we can diagnose uh, intellectual disability and what I want to guess? Five okay. years. Yes, five years old. So, why at that age? Hmm. Because the cognitive is reliable. Ah, yes. So, how many classification of intellectual disability we have? So, we have four. Mm -hmm. You know, an answer. So, yeah, intellectual disability. We use it for a uh, five years old child because the cognitive function is can is more reliable, and the classification there are four: mild, moderate, severe, and profound. For the so for the mild, uh, uh, the child is uh, can be can be independent but have uh, difficult uh, comprehension of academic skill. So for moderate, uh, the child can self-sustain himself, but uh, need moderate assistance. 
while possible, the child can still be independent in the most basic skill with intense training and require supervision in uh, most of the situation. But for profound, patient uh, is almost 100% relying on assistance for everything. Okay, next. Um, so the main question is, can status epilepticus lead to a consequence of developmental delay? Yes. Can you guess? Yes. Yes, yes that's true. That's it. According to several studies, it, uh, it can cause uh, developmental delay. Uh, so, okay, so the uh, previous slide, previous slide, previous, previous slide, previous slide. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, one of the articles that I found that um, connecting uh, with status epileptical and developmental milestone. So, the title, Early Developmental Outcomes in Children Following Convulsive Status Epilepticus. But in this uh, article, the... Uh, sorry, Hannah. Sihana, can you off your mic? Okay, thank you. So, um, in this article... Um, they, they, they try to uh, find a relationship between a specific convuls uh, type of convulsive, status epilepticus, and environmental delay. So, the next slide. Okay, so from that, eh, sorry. Uh, okay, so from the, the article, uh, they found out that in children, uh, sorry, uh, so in children uh, who have uh, convulsive status epilepticus, uh, will have a developmental delay within six weeks following their symptoms. And then uh, the seizure that lasting uh, longer than 30 minutes are, found, uh, are more found to have a uh, uh, developmental delay. And then uh, they suggest also that neurodevelopmental impairments continue to present one year after the, even after, after one year of uh, the symptoms. Okay, next. Next slide. Okay, this is another article that I found uh, that connecting uh, the epilepsy and behavior. So the title is Developmental Outcome After a Single Episode of Step, uh, Status Epilepticus. So from the article, I found out that. Uh, next slide. Uh, Icardi and Chevry conducted a retrospective study in heterogeneous cohort of 239 children aged 1 month to 15 years of age who had experienced uh, a single episode of status epilepticus that lasted for more than 1 hour. 11% of patients died during or after the episode. Out of the remaining children, they found that 20% showed a motor delays. Next slide. In a Canadian study, 52 patients who had experienced an episode of status epilepticus lasting at least 30 minutes were followed by a course of uh, 18 months. Eh, for 34 children, it was their first and only episode of status epilepticus. Among those with previous normal development, 30% showed neurodevelopmental sequelae, whereas 25% of those who had already existing problems deteriorate even further. Please note that I highlighted uh, the uh, duration and also um, uh, the domains uh, of the developmental delay. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, next is uh, previous slide. Number three, number three. Okay. Lacroix et al. Uh, studied the files of 147 children 10 years after they had experienced an episode of status epilepticus and found that among 114 children without clinical or cognitive antecedent, 30% showed deficits that were already pres uh, present one year following the event. And then children below the age of four years were especially vulnerable. So uh, why uh, children under four years are more vulnerable to have a developmental delay uh, when having a status epilepticus is because of uh, their brain uh, is actively growing on that age. Okay, next. Yes. Okay, uh, this is also uh, from the article. Uh, it says that severe seizures uh, inhibit brain growth, 
modify neuronal circuits, increase neuronal excitability, interfere with normal elimination of redundant neural uh, connections and can lead to behavioral deficits. So it also may affect uh, the behavior of the patients and the duration of the episodes appear to be a determining factor. That's why uh, we need to uh, really jot down the, the durations of the episodes of uh, having a fitting, uh, fitting. So a duration of exceeding more than 60 minutes uh, usually are found to have um, more or higher risk to have a developmental delay uh, during their follow-up. Okay, next. Okay, so this is just... Question. Uh, okay. Tadi just now, convulsive status epilepticus tu. Ada reason ke convulsive dengan non? Convulsive. Uh, uh, from okay. from what I found, uh, the it depends on the um, okay. for the convulsive. Uh, they got under convulsive. They have several. Uh, oh, change okay. Okay. Okay, uh, so under convulsive, um, usually patient will manifest the symptoms of, uh, like uh, if generalized, patient will manifest symptoms like tonic clonic uh, or myoclonic, uh, but in non convulsive, patient may show uh, like uh, an absence seizure. So usually non convulsive uh, status epilepticus is harder to diagnose compared to convulsive because, because convulsive you can see through uh, just a clinical presentation but this one need to dig further that, that is uh, as far as I know okay thank you uh, okay so for the management uh, this one uh, I think actually probably important so when the patient uh, come with seizure so the seizure is lasted for more than five minutes. So we need to establish a diagnosis of impending status epilepticus, meaning to say that patient might go to status epilepticus. So we need to um, immediately prevent uh, patient from going to SE. Lah. So what we need to do is, um, what is the guy? Uh, we can give a parietal diazepam, a dose of 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 milligram per kilo with maximum of 10 milligram or we can give buccal midazolam 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 milligram per kilo, maximum of 10 milligram. So if the seizures uh, still doesn't resolve and persist for uh, up to 30 minutes, 5 to 30 minutes, then we can uh, establish a diagnosis of status epilepticus. So, uh, okay. so um, now that we need to obtain the uh, IV access and we can give IV diazepam 0 0.2 milligram per kilo slow bolus. Uh, if the seizure still continue after even after five minutes of given uh, IV diazepam, we need to add on. Uh, next, we need to add on with IV pentoin 20 milligram per kilogram. So after this phase, if the patient uh, still continues to have a fitting episode, then we call it as uh, having an early refractory status epilepticus. So this is uh, actually dangerous. So we need to consult a penetration and, and uh, need to, uh, for further management. Lah. So if the seizure still continues after uh, 10 minutes of given phenytoin, we can give uh, introduce we can, we can give IV midazolam or IV phenobarbiton, IV levotiracetam or IV uh, sodium vaporate. But if still seizure, uh, we need to we can establish the diagnosis of uh, status epilepticus, and we can refer to the pediatric neuro neurologist and intensivist uh, to induce coma in patients. So we can. Uh, do a general anesthesia to patient to induce coma. <clears throat> okay, that's all for me.
So, kira yang dah habis eh. Dah habis hmm, Dah lah. Alright. Eh, sekejap. Nak ambil print screen sekejap. Gambar. Tak. Nanti semua. Sekejap, sekejap. Buka Boleh kamera. Boleh buat piece ke? Ha? Boleh buat piece Alah, ke? Alah, kamera saya gelap. Oh, gelap agak. Okay. Buka flashlight lah ni, flashlight. Flashlight yang pun. Ya. Yeah. Oh, sh- oh, sh- oh, sh- yeah. Alright. Okay. Tadi lah. Sekejap, sekejap. Hai, dulu sekejap. Ada orang mesej tadi. Satu, dua, tiga. Okay. Alright. Satu. Sekejap. Satu lagi. Eh, lagi kan? Satu, 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 satu cukup lah. Yeah. Formal ke tak? Formal. Oh, formal macam mana kat sini? Tak, aku buat tak formal ni. Tak, kuat ah. Alah, okay. tadi aku buat formal. Tadi saya buat formal. Oh. Ah, okay. Alright, baiklah. Satu, dua, tiga. Okay. Alright. Okay, jangan lupa siapkan neuro punya slide. Yeah. Bye, Assalamualaikum. Salam. Eh, so, put, bro. Kalau sempat, doktor nak suruh buat. Alright. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, so. Okay, thank you guys.